dangerous. It's a slippery slope, my friend. All right. So, I'm assuming that by the time we get to Atros, that Ben will probably be here, since it's already 20 after. Um, where we last left off, we were still in combat. Um, I believe the second to last round, um, what uh, Ono had seen as Ono was, he saw Zeradoc heading up a lift um, towards a like towards the surface, at least that direction, uh, and he was going to pursue him through the door. But out stepping from the door were two clockwork-based automaton, um, Big Tune and Ono. Uh, being in that close proximity, saw that um, from the assassin that they uh, glowed with that purple hue that they recognized from uh, Kanit's mechanic alarm. And uh, the clockwork automaton, uh, the, not, not, they're both clockwork, their clockwork mage, uh, when they flew up into the air, you saw that they were able to cast a secondary spell by once again... Uh, glowing with that same purple hue um but then ono oh fell down and is fighting for his life and big tune is engaged with the assassin uh, most of the creatures inside the room are dead which is nice but uh um yeah quill is dead zabane is hanging on for dear life and uh tilly is hanging out on the platform which is at surface level now it's not 20 feet in the air um never mind I did burn my last first level uh, silvery barbs to prevent a crit and gave my advantage to... Now, I can't remember who I think. I think I gave it to... It was either Ebrin or Bigtoon. One of the two. Uh, but I gave that advantage to one of them. Bigtoon, because I was out of line of sight. I'm too far away. Okay, then. Yeah, there we go. All right, so Bigtoon has advantage on his next attack or ability check. I believe I already used it. Because isn't he before right. me? No, yeah, is he, he before cause... me in, in line? I mean, I'm before you, yes. So but then, I you would have given it to me then. I, yeah, yeah, I can't give it to I can't give it to Ebron because I don't see him. I can only see you. So. Right, but that's right. what I'm saying. So I would have already but, probably used it. I'm just yeah. objecting because I attacked the assassin. Yeah, you did. No, I think you're right. You did use it. Because Ono oh, okay. fell, and then you're after Ben, and then you used it there. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um. Getting back into the swing of things, we start the round off with Miris. I don't know if anybody else, I can barely hear. Uh, Ian, speak up! Ian. <laughs> Always have to turn up everything. Ian is the loudest one in chat right now, and he's there. I'm gonna buy him like a 2008 microphone where it just sounds like oh my god, you right now? For God's sakes, bro. Okay, sorry. I I had the game pause for a second there. Um, what are we trying to do? Uh, uh yeah, I was going to try to move uh closer to the assassin, and I think for this turn I'll just use uh chill touch on it. Okay. Should be able to. There you go. Okay. Don't forget the target and then go ahead. Oof. Um, as you. Cast out this uh, the skeletal hand um, and try to like make purchase on the uh, on the side of the assassin to attempt to slow it down. You see the uh, the assassin's deafness uh, seems to evade this uh, hand as it tries to like clamp down on its uh, on his wooden body. Your attack's gonna miss. do for now. Okay. That brings us to Senior Sheriff. Ooh, Get Atros him, is not the Atros is not in flanking range anymore. Okay. Um, Wait, um does Atros still have his aura up? 
I'm not trying to. Uh, he does still have his uh, 30 foot aura. That's a good call. Um, Miris, Miris, what is your temp HP? Uh, I don't believe I have any temp HP right now. Okay. Well, he would definitely give you temp HP. You gain 7 temporary HP. Oh yeah. Alright. Okay. Sheriff, bless his soul, is going to look between the Durgar and seeing that Aethros dipped on him, he's going to try and take out the smaller one. Dual wielding, he's going to attack once with his long sword. It's going to hit. And do a nice 8 damage. He's going to attack again. That one is going to miss, and then he has one more attack with his short sword. It's so weird, because it, it, it told me whether or not it hit with the long sword, but now with the short sword it doesn't tell me. That's so weird. I don't know. I'll figure it out at some point in my life. For 7 damage. Aethros, you gave temp HP to Nearest, by the way, if you can hear us. Alright. Sweet. The killer rolled for you. Stupid okay. after his turn, but okay. Um, that'll bring us to Tilly. Tilly, you got anything to get him back up? Referring to Ona. Uh, you would see her, uh, well, you would see her very short. Oh, no, never mind. She's not up in the air. You would see her shake her head. No, I don't, but I'll try to help. Um, she's going to. Ooh, I know what she's going to do. She is going to look at Big Tune. Oh, sorry. I'm to read something quick. There you go. Oh, cool. I, I just closed out of it. Nice. Sweet. Good job. <laughs> That's what Tilly did. She made you close out of Ponder. <laughs> he just ditched yeah, the yeah. game. <laughs> Bye, Nick. She's going to... <laughs> yeah, she... She, she told me to hit alt F4. <laughs> she's going to target Victoon, and she's going to cast Enlarge on him. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I... Yeah. Do I have to yes. fail this if I want it? Mm. I, I think you want this. Well, that's if what the I'm target saying, is unwilling, like... they have to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, okay. I got so, you. I, if, so if I'm willing, yeah, then I can just automatically then, yeah, fail it. it. Doesn't, yeah, then the roll doesn't matter. So. Okay. Then I'm just going to close that out then. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And then I got to edit your token to make you a big boy. <laughs> hey, that means I can pick up my shield. <laughs> yeah, you, are, you do, in fact, grow to a close. The friggin' tide battle, right? <laughs> um, all of your attacks while you're enlarged do an extra 1d6 damage. Let's go! Sweet. And you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Okay. Oh, sorry, not 1d6 damage, 1d4 damage. Oh, Regardless, yeah, that, it's yeah. extra damage. And she, uh. Oh, she looks to you, uh, oh, 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 oh. Big Tune, and is like, um, don't fall. 
and she like looks to the forge as you're like you grow in size to be like next to the forge. You can kind of feel the heat, uh, the heat waves radiating off it. You kind of like move your foot so it's not too too close. Um, and then she's going to fucking dip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just the way you said it. Um, dip out of dodge. <laughs> and that'll be her to return. Where'd oh no, go? make a death saving throw if it doesn't already prompt you. Uh, it has not prompted me. Uh, I am awaiting the prompt for... Wait, where is it? Or does you want me to roll a d20? Just, uh, yeah, you should actually be able to roll it under hey, your attributes page, I think. Just click death saves. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, normal death save. What? You let's hey. go let's go oh no you kind of like as you're like bleeding out on the ground you gain uh yeah. you begin <laughs> thinking about uh the journeys you've had so far and the rage of zeradoc uh taking off up the lift uh inspires you and you push through your own limits uh yeah. a plus ultra if you will and uh rise Blood to the out of my nose. while bleeding out you rise with one hp yeah <laughs> Uh, it sucked. Getting hit with a hammer. Get that sucked. Uh. I target the assassin uh, and firebolt him. You're That's fine, oh no. This is yeah. Giant but every, yeah, everything's really wobbly and warbly in my head, and I'm just like, bah. Then you look over and you see me. <laughs> Double. Is this a dream? Is this reality? Yeah. Like, hey, what's up, old oh, no. yeah. <laughs> 22 is going to hit. Go ahead and roll Let's for damage. Let's go. And just, I, I'm like, I sit straight up, and I'm like, oh, that sucked. I rip around and just crack off two, like, my, my firebolts uh, in that direction. Hopefully they do enough. I don't know what they're going to do. That is, in fact, going to hit, and you watch as, like, the back section of the assassin itself begins to light a, fl uh, to light a flame as your uh, your attack critically wounds it. It's awesome. still standing, but it's, like, beginning to burn itself alive. Awesome. Uh, I... <sighs> Damn it. I want you to make a perception check while you're... Uh, uh, since you hit it with an attack once. Is it beginning to it. char? Okay. I was gonna... Okay, cool. Okay. As a uh, <laughs> yeah, as like you hit it in one of its uh, critical areas, like a couple of the servos that are inside begin to slightly malfunction. It's still able to kind of keep up its pace, but it won't be able to for much longer. Um, you see an insignia that you haven't seen in a very, very long time. Um, you rec and as you like look at the Clockwork Assassin itself, you begin to recognize that. Its build originates from somewhere you're very familiar. Um, you recognize this from a uh, from a weaponsmith that you had at one point in your life uh, seen and heard the great works of while you were in Sigil. Uh, that is all. I I get that like spark of like I know this and I shout out, "Don't fully destroy it! I have to keep that. But we gotta take it down." And I point my finger at this draugr next to me, and in dwarvish, aggressive dwarvish, I go, You're next. And that's my turn. Okay. Into the darkness. <laughs> uh, brings us to the Duragar by the Sheriff. Oh, seriously. What? No, wait, what? I'm HP if you're in the darkness. I'm not. I, no, I'm not. If I step away, I'm going to get hit. Well, unless God will let me rotate around and catch the cusp of it. I mean, if you move if five you feet, move, you'll still be within. Yeah, if, you if you I, like, if you'll let square, me... Yeah, yeah I'd say you'd be able to stumble your way there. Okay, cool, yeah, then, yeah. Uh, I will... If you'll allow me, I will happily take that temp HP. Yeah, of course. Sick. Uh, let's go, I'll take that. Uh, eight... Eight, 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 eight's good. I'm, <laughs> boys, boys. I'm at a hot nine. Yeah, better than zero. Better than zero. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm. I just, 
I'm doing the angry mon monkey point from Family Guy at this Draugr. All right. The, uh, the Draugr up by the Sheriff is going to try to attack him, but it can't get through his defenses with its, uh, with its hammer as the Sheriff is parrying away. Um, I'll bring this to the big Durgar. Okay, next to the Sheriff. Okay, that makes sense. It is going to take a step. Um, it's actually... Let's see. Ooh, okay. Um, it's going to take a look around, uh, see the party uh, beginning to win the battle... And it's going to turn and face. It's gonna turn its attention to the Durgar that is facing the sheriff, and make an attack against that Durgar. All you hear come from its mouth in a very large and bellowy tone is, "Down with Zedadok!" As uh, it brings its hammer down, trying to attack the Durgar at ground level. Okay. So now we have a roll. Durgar and Lars on our side. I mean, is that what I'm, I was just want to make sure I'm hearing that right? <laughs> look, I've outwardly screamed that their leader is a coward, and I'm gonna do it again next turn. So, as uh, it brings its giant hammer down, you see it just eviscerate it, the the Durgar's body all over the ground, uh, sending <laughs> blood shooting everywhere. I gotta edit its token. He is now. Technically neutral. Neutral's good. <laughs> we can deal with neutral. <laughs> Neutral's good. <laughs> we can negotiate with neutral. That's too good. Really missed the chance on that one. I, I really, really, really missed the chance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you screwed the pooch on that one, Nikki. <laughs> you look chunk. <laughs> I could have. Also, I totally forgot to turn around and, and be like, "Oh wow, you're big, kitty." <laughs> and he's going to turn at the Durgar that is behind him and make his way northward, kind of like giving the sheriff like this like respectful glance but not really paying him as much mind, trying to <laughs> assist in whatever ways he can. Oh, all the oh, guy. That's what's up. Give us I that motivation, Max. As he starts crying, yeah. <laughs> that's, his little, that's his little giggle. I need that moral support, Max. All right, that'll bring us to the Clockwork Assassin. Who, mechanically, there is no read of emotions as Big Tune grows two times that day. <laughs> um, he's going to target you with some lance attacks. Uh, would now, it, me being cool. so close impose disadvantage as we're technically flanking him? It doesn't pose oh. disadvantage, it only gives you advantage okay, on fair, the fair, attacks. Fair. So in other words, I'm about to work this thing. <laughs> Yo, well, hopefully... I was about to ask with Nick being significantly taller now, is there any disadvantage that way or no? No. Nope. Okay. My ASD doesn't change or anything, right? No. Correct. Plus okay, 10. Cool. Just cool. right. hey, I think it's bigger. <laughs> it's easier to hit a bigger target. Right. It's I just don't know if I got tougher. Um, you can imagine yourself tougher, but it... It doesn't impact but, you like, as directly. Yeah, we know you're tougher. It, it's more tough to the pry, like to the to the soul, not to the armor <laughs> or right. to the skin. Its first attack is going to miss. It's going to make a parry. second attack. All right, parry. Do you have a parry? I don't have any left. Yes. The second one is going to hit. Hey, can you stop yelling for a few minutes, dude? For a total of ten damage. Alright. Cool, that came straight off. I don't have to fix it. Such an me. Some of them come straight off and some of them don't. And then it is going to, uh, once again, make uh, one final attack with its uh, hasted boost against okay. you. Twenty-eight 
26 will hit. Yeah, that should. <laughs> For an additional 9. Ooh. Okay. And then it is going to... Attempt to move Ooh. around you to get to Miris. Okay. All right. All right. Bold strategy. We'll see how that, that plays would, out. Yeah, that would be an attack of opportunity if Ono wants to take it. I will happily take it. I'm going to... Oh, yeah. Duh. yeah I, I will get one. Okay. Yeah. It might require five. you to be within five feet, so I'll wait. Good. Uh, where is my... I think that might be it. Oh, that's probably not it. That's probably not the right roll. If you disregard, if you disregard, I think one of those one of those modifiers is correct. Uh, that should be your proficiency bonus and your build modifier. So then maybe that one's right. Yeah. If you have a plus four for your uh, my just my uh, staff. Oh, okay. Yeah, twenty four would twenty four will hit. So, I'm just okay. making sure that the the because I just rolled one of my macros. I thought it was my. I think that's my staff macro. I'm not. 100% I would sound sure. it because it'd be a three for proficiency. Four. Well, where's the four coming from? That's the question. That's why. That's what I'm saying. It Dex. might be wrong. What's your dexterity bonus? Uh, plus. Give me a second. Uh, bu -bu 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 two. So no, that's okay. So the four should be a two. I mean, unless it, way, unless 20... it's doubled, because I'm mm, no. A twenty. I can reroll it. Hit, so okay also flanking so yeah I I think think roll two whatever but yeah uh okay. give me a second inventory quarter staff attack damage here normal hit oh. i'll take that right, for six apparently i'm not proficient in my quarter staff that doesn't make sense that yeah, doesn't make any sense at all Okay, so it gets hit on the back by you in like an area that it's kind of been like lit ablaze, but it is still able to keep moving. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, it, it pains within... me to destroy. I don't want to destroy this. It gets within range of Miris, but he already used all of his attacks, so that's going to be the end of his turn. Okay. Uh, Clockwork Mage is going to fly an additional 15 feet up in the air. Well, that answers that question. These are the mages, right? Yeah. So he's now 30 yeah. feet up in the air. Yeah. Had, had he stayed at that 15 feet, would I have been able to theoretically hit him still? If I'm what? Because I'm like... 13 feet tall. Um. Yeah, probably. Okay, I was just curious. I don't. I, I didn't think it was gonna come to that on my turn, but. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I mean, what? Clockwork Mage. Um. Oh no, when you're. Oh no, and Bigtoon and Miris and Aethros for sure. Um, everybody who's alive would see it at least to an extent. You see the Major clasp two of its uh, four hands together, and you see a, um, a small black like uh, sphere form uh, between its hands, uh, rotating quite rapidly. Um, it's going to clasp its hands together and you see this wave of black energy ripple throughout a large portion of the room and it is going to use what is called an anti-magic pulse oh that's not fun <laughs> everyone within 60 feet Caught in the pulse has all magical effects nullified, inclusive from sources like Channel Divinity, until the end of their next turn. That's that dirty. feels targeted. That's that feels dirty. targeted. Yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel attacked over here. <laughs> well, I'm just so saying because be... it specifically manages the Channel Divinity. <laughs> it's such a... So it just bro. misses me. 
It'll just miss. <laughs> yeah, just misses Ebrin, but that means that the enlarge effect will end temporarily. Wow. Um, I don't think anybody else is concentrating. I think it'll mean the 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 bubble will end. It'll mean that the both of the enlarged uh, Duragars uh, uh, enlarge effects will end. Where did Tilly go? Is she affected? Oh, I did not. Yeah, I don't see. What was the range of that again? Did you say? 60, 60 feet. 60 feet. And is it a sphere around him? Correct. That's oh. That's like a whole friggin' room, dude. Well, he's also 30 feet up, so yeah. that means it's gonna crest and it might miss people. Yeah, I'm gonna put an aura on it. Without doing math, that's, yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Ben's doing the math right now. Yeah, Mr. Engineer, figure it out. You have to get on one of the fucking towers. Fifty-nine point or fifty-one point nine six one five B at the base. Be the range. <laughs> er. yeah. There's I there's not a point on this map I can get to fast enough. Nope. Is this concentration? It is not. He's thirty feet. Okay. Up. So it's just a this is just a thing that will be for a turn or whatever. Gotcha. One thing, I don't know why I didn't write it. I had this whole thing elaborately written out. It's in my notes app, but it's not on here. Weird of me. You do not have access to the weave wall until the end of your next turn as well. So you have the, uh, the magical effects are nullified and you cannot cast the spell until the end of your next turn. So for like Aethros, it'd be one turn. Jesus. However, once the turn is over, then his aura kicks back in. It's not ending it, just temporarily leaving him of the ability oh. to benefit from it. Oops. Oh, I should have act or uh, removed it from my effect. Okay. Jesus, why are they both think? I gotta change that. That's really annoying. <laughs> Oh, it just changes both of them while they're in there. Okay, never mind. Doesn't really matter either way. All right. Um, that is its action. Since this creature is immune to the anti-magic pulse, it is going to uh, spend another charge and cast one more spell. If I can open up the stand character sheet. Choices are hard. Oh god. What do I want I I know what I'm in. Uh no, I don't that was why. It's going to move. One more square. And on Big Tune and Aethros, it is going to cast Lightning Bolt. It's last third level. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. either of you for a saving throw? It did not. Nope. What the fuck? Okay, hold on. You missed that. Also, with being up 30 feet, he's got to angle down. Can he still get a line through the two of us? 
Ooh, a good call. That angle? <laughs> I'd argue only one. Unless you want to keep him on the ground for me to hit. These are good questions. <laughs> he's like, he's... I just wanted to attack you guys. I'm not trying to do yeah. mad hits. I'm going to talk at night. These are good questions, I'm guys. I'm just trying to have fun. I don't <laughs> No, you're um, gold. Several rules lawyers well, at the table. Well, between those, I'm going to put the priority then on Big Two. So then, never mind. I don't need to draw my thing. Big Tune, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Since I, I think you're right. I think with the thirty feet okay. up, it's only gonna be able to hit one. Dexterity saving throw. That's what's up. Seventeen. Okay. Hoping that means I take half damage. Yeah. That would mean that you do take half damage once I get that far. Sweet. Well, I mean, I guess technically I should have been hoping that it means I don't take any damage, but. <laughs> oh my god, come on. Bro. So stupid. It requires you to place the template in order to actually. It's fine. It's fine. Just, just don't, music. just don't, listen, just don't, just don't do 48 damage, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just don't do it. 1d4, right? No. Bruh. This oh, is going to be, you. you take a total of 17 damage. As you <laughs> okay. succeed on your saving throw. So, alright, cool. I I'm ouchies, um, currently. Nats, come on, man. Um, but that'll be all it can do. It burnt its two effects for this turn. And that's going to be its turn. It's going to just hang it up in the air up there, monitoring this whole situation. It's not dead. Um, final Quagoth between the Clockwork Defender and uh, Zabane is going to go. And between the two, Zabane is a much easier target. I'm gonna make make an attack against him. And is not able to make purchase. Zabane is holding his own. Uh Duragar, who has been shrunken on the other side of the other side of the forge, is going to Ooh. Um, hearing the commotions from the other side, he's going to make his way up towards the defector Duragar. And dash. And that's all he can do. Ebring, you're up. Alright, time for the same questions as usual. Um... The Durgar next to Ono, with him there, I would have advantage on an attack, correct? Technically, yes. Alright, seeing my short little comrade bounce back up, Ebrin will be Are you attacking. Are uh, With my longbow, I have range up to 150 slash 600 Oh, right, feet. so it would be, a, I'm thinking of your psionic arrows. Never mind, keep going. So, I was going to use that, but there's that nice little field there and i don't know if that would affect me or not anyway i'm still gonna just use the longbow well it was a pulse so it was a you didn't hit the initial effect it wouldn't affect you if you walked inside now oh. it's just everybody who got hit by it initially um oh. no longer has access to it. it was a singular pulse out to that range so i have advantage on an attack i'll get sneak attack do i risk sure no, i'm not gonna risk sharpshooter just gonna do the attack roll with advantage Hey, uh, for what it's worth, Dakota, yeah. should I be where I was, which uh, which I believe was there, right? Because the defender or the assassin was there, wasn't he? I'll give you the choice. You can choose which of the four squares you came down. 
Um, that's a, that, that was yeah. your last spot right there, bro. Yeah, I think, I think that's where I want to be. Okay. Doesn't really change much, but... That 21 yeah. will hit, by the way. Cool. Fuck those dice. 23 damage, okay. Jesus. Is that guy still up? Aim a well-purchased shot, you mm. hit it square between the eyes, and he falls over, dropping his hammer on the ground. Bonus action, I'm going to fire yeah. again, this time with psionic arrows. Okay, um, take your, oh wait, you gotta take your step inward to, so I want, I want never mind, it doesn't matter, you already spent five feet, it doesn't matter, keep going. Ignore me. Oh, this well, I'm time. aiming at the Quagoth up top. Right. No, I was just saying for the other one, because technically you need to spend at least five feet to get within range of that one. But because my longbow, I can hit up to 150 feet. Right, but in order for you to benefit, in order for you to have the bonus action attack, you have to use your psionic attack. Uh... Otherwise, you don't get the bonus action attack. The two are linked together. So if you didn't use psionic, you would not have a bonus action attack this turn. I'll he leave it up to you. Forward or sidestep? No, I'll, I'll he, leave it up to you. He has to move within that initial, what was the field range. Um, if I can do the bonus, I'm fine. If you want to yeah. RP it, then you I can't, did you move. can't use your psionics inside of this field, apparently, right? No, or... it was a one time pulse. So if oh, you weren't okay, in there okay. when it went off, you would be fine walking back He's into fine. it. All right. It just cut okay. off anybody who was affected by it from the weed for one turn. Copy, copy, copy. And then I'll have an advantage on the Quagoth as well, right? Correct, because they are considered your allies. And then I am going to make that a sharpshooter. Okay. Let's go! And right. that's going to be a versatile one, technically, correct? It'll be a versatile attack, yes. Okay. Um, but it'll be... It should give you the option to roll... Crit damage. Critical. Oh, crit plus time. Jesus. 21 damage. As the Quagoth also falls to your attack, taking a really uh, a powerful blow to one of its uh, one of its shoulder blades, you watch as like that whole part of its body kind of just eviscerates outward with a radiating uh, purple hue from your psychic uh, arrow that you launched. I spend my 10 feet and move back. <laughs> I know it's not like an AoE thing right now, but I'm still gonna try being outside that 60 feet radius. Right. Um, and that's all I can do, so I end my turn. Okay. Aethros, for this turn you are cut off from the weave, so you would not be able to cast spells. Okay. Uh, I move 5, and 15, and 20. 25 and attack this assassin with my hammer. Go for it. Uh, it is not doing the damage rolls again. Or let me do the attack rolls. Aim to disable, not to destroy. When you open up the icon, it doesn't give you the attack options. Nope, oh, it's just damage God and then first dial under no. Shit. Even when you target him? Yep, oh, it's so targeting him. Wild. Uh, yeah, let's cut up for that. I'm going Be to... Ready. Oh, hold on. Very intense music for going through item menus. <laughs> I'm playing. Hold on, I'm playing with. Try right. again once. Oh, I just build his damage reverse style. Yeah, oh. I thought you switch it. Uh, I'll what just the do the manual roll. I mean, I guess so. That's really annoying. And then also, I am flanking both Mirrors and Big Tune. Correct. So you would have advantage. Okay. Yeah, 27 is going to hit. Wait. Nope. 
Yeah, that added it up wrong. So it's 13 so... plus 3 plus 3, so it's 19. My bad. Yeah. It's okay. I think you have to uh, put... 19 will not... Like, GKH or whatever after the 2d20 if you want to do advantage. Okay. A 19 will not hit him? A 19 will not hit. Okay. I should say, uh, no, that's like, you swing turn. your hammer at him, but the, uh, the, uh, strength of your throw does not seem to even phase it, technically. Either way, it, it doesn't do damage. Okay. And that's under my turn. Okay. Big tune. muted myself whoopsies um okay <laughs> i am just gonna have to i'm sorry i'm just going to do it for real no you're good yeah sure little man has made his bed um well either way i'm a, i'm just going would i be considered flanking them if you like because i can technically draw a line through like the corner of them Yep, you, Mirus, and Aethros, with your triangle, you all would benefit from flanking. Ow. And I'm going, I'm going to attack him. There we are. Ah, damn it, I didn't do it. I literally just asked about it, and I didn't do it. Well, either way. 15 is not going to hit. Nope. And then I guess I'll do it again. Okay. This time. Oh. Cool. I'm very upset that I got big and then small. <laughs> Your biggie smalls. No kidding. More like big D smalls. Um, <laughs> <I'm dying. laughs> um, Victory, I... I would like, since you've been fighting the assassin this entire time, pretty much, I would like for mm -hmm. you to make a perception check. Okay. Oh, good, I can do that. You see, uh, as it, like, turns to face Aethros, who kind of like fa uh, begins facing off in this uh, battle against the assassin. You see uh, where a uh, Ono had been, where Ono hit it with his firebolt, you see a, uh, uh, what looks to be some form of uh, fuel system for the clockwork uh, assassin. You see what were, uh, you have three large vials that seem to be attached and supplying energy into this creature. You see that there is one left. Uh, the other two seem to have been uh, disposed of already. Or whatever was inside is oh. already gone. Uh, is there any sort of, like, check I can make to understand whether or not it's, like, like, uh, did it use it to attack? Or was it already gone when the, you know what I mean? Like, is there anything I can do to, to, to discern that? Um... I'm gonna have you roll an insight check. Insight, okay. Um, you, uh, your informate like, as it entered into the room, it gave you uh, a familiar feeling, as though, uh, uh, as uh, very similar to what Kanit had within his uh, his arm. Um, you remember that Kanit had a. Uh, he used lifespan vials as a fuel source to power some of his stuff. Um, you feel pretty confident that it is why this assassin is uh, as agile as what it is right now. is because it's mm. currently supplying that within its body. Okay, so it's not like it's life force necessarily, but it's like helping. I see that. Okay. Right. And it has one more vial that you can like see is now pouring. Like, It's like the vial is like slowly draining as this uh, as this round is going on. Um, gotcha. You feel that after its next round, that it'll probably slow way down, or at least okay. up to a more manageable level. 
Anything else, Big Tune? Uh, no. I, I literally can't do anything else. Alright. The Clockwork Defender. Let's see. It is... What the fuck does it want to do? Yeah, it's going to move up to help the sheriff. Um, and two, three, four, five. It'll dash for its turn. I uh, forgot yeah, something. There. Dakota, can you roll a d6 for me? Um, oh. what was the d6 for again? My, uh, lovely little thing on my pinky. Oh, right. Sorry, forgot about that. I did too. Sorry. It would be, it's actually a uh, uh, hit die, so it would be a d8. Oh, nice. Dude, you gotta stop taking damage, dude. You do recover up to your full health. Sweet! Yeah, stop taking damage. Okay, you're just... Thank you. And you feel the pain coming from that ring uh, seem to uh, disappear as, like, your wounds themselves that you might have had uh, begin to, like, are closed enough to help you not bleed out in battle. What if, um, which is a quick question, going back to my turn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it would... Would I have been, been able to pick up my shield, or was that like to be like an acting? Um, that would be an interaction, so you could pick up your shield. Okay, well then I would have had to, I guess, move over one and stay in his. I mean, I still would have stayed in his range anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah I believe it. Was, I believe it was right here. So okay, I'll just do that for the sake of it. So you you pick up your shield and reattach yeah. it, so you can re-equip it then. Okay. Cool. Sorry, I'm just checking some things. Um, okay. Uh, there's are not in here. Um, I would say all of you, everybody in this room, would see uh, the Duragar that had disappeared off of the. Uh, off of the platform, you would see, you would hear an, a loud noise as it itself also uh, disappears up a lift, um, <laughs> leaving the, the forge itself heading upwards towards the surface. And that'll bring us to Zabane. I'm gonna just toggle him out. Okay, Zabane is not wanting to engage in more combat as he is holding on for dear life he is going to make a run somewhere where he can see if he can find some cover he's just gonna like hug the wall he is small small boy small oh. what can he cast he's gonna cast blur on himself to give disadvantage on attacks against him but that'll be all he does because he was not in the fall. Back to the top of the round, round seven. It'll be Miris. All right. Uh... Remember, you do not have access to spells this turn. Okay. Uh... I think I'll just attack the assassin with my dagger. Okay. You would have advantage on the attack due to flanking. Just so you know. Yeah, Even with that 19, as you uh, go in to stab with your attack, um, your attack itself like hits the armor, the, the wooden armor that the creature has, but you don't seem to do any damage with it. As, as of right now, 19 is not technically going to hit. 
Okay. Um... With Thirsting Blade, though, you do have a secondary attack. Okay. Uh... I think I'll also attack the uh, mage with my crossbow. Oh. Okay, so you kind of like reholster your dagger and uh, in one fluid motion pull out your crossbow. Go for it. That 16 is going to hit. Go ahead and roll for damage, sir. Oh my god, I want to attack that one. <laughs> Four. Four. It explodes. <laughs> Old glass cannon. Uh, Yo, could you no fucking imagine that? On its concentration check. As it maintains its flight, you do manage to... Uh, make purchase on some damage against the uh, against the flying mage. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll be it for my turn. Okay. That'll bring us to the sheriff. Sheriff, seeing the uh, Duragar that has joined your side of the fray, he is going to. run up and attack the Duragar between him and uh, the Clockwork Soldier. With advantage. Could I actually implore the Sheriff to back up Big Tune? He would have enough movement to get right next to uh, Miras, I think that is. And attack the Clockwork Assassin. Like Sheriff, Big Two, and Mirrors, they need help, man. There's enough of you guys down there. I think you can handle it. Hey, I saved your life. So did I. Hmm? That's fine. Never mind then. Is that implying that you guys cannot, in fact, handle it? Nobody said that. I mean, we have a neutral Duragar and a clock work thing attacking. I think they're, I think they're good up there. You never know. Fine, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. But you better kill both the bad guys now. Challenge accepted. <laughs> First attack will hit, does some damage. Second one, once again, misses. He is not going too well with those freaking long swords, man. But, his I think, third attack does do damage. I think Victoon believes that, hit, that that pulse came out affects long swords and not magic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, he begins attacking Durgar. That'll be his turn. That'll bring us to Tilly. Who, like, being affected by the pulse, she's, like, trying to run through, like, somatic components as she, like, sees Big Tune shrink back down and can't really do a whole lot from where she's at. So she's just going to hang out at the edge of the platform and take some cover. But that'll bring us to Ono. She doesn't have, like, a bow or anything? Nope. She has a dagger. She could throw the dagger, but then she wouldn't have a dagger. <laughs> ah! All right. <clears throat> I am still cut off from the weave. Correct. Until the end of your turn, you are cut off from the weave. Cool. I look at the mage, flip them a gnomish finger, and it's a ring I'm finger, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> and I'm going to look at Kitty and look at the rest of my family, Aethros and Miras, and I'm going to go. Hold him! I'm gonna rush him! And I'm booking for the Clockwork Assassin. Okay. And I'm going to try to tinker this machine off. 
Now, okay. I would wager, since they are fully surrounded by the entirety of my family, that while being engaged with Bictoon and Aethros on one side, Mirus just fully landed an attacker right up on top of him. I would wager that maybe I have advantage because I'm not necessarily making an attack, but this is my forte. And whether or not I don't have magic, I still have my tools. Well, yeah, and it's literally turned around facing towards Mirrors in theory, so. And at the very least, you'd be slightly behind him. So. And don't you also know who made him? I do. Um. Here's what I'm gonna do. Because it's under pressure. Like, you're going to be trying to tinker um, in it, like, trying to do a, a, a tinker to shut it down in a very quick and uh, high pressure well, I'm, manner. I'm rocket raccooning this thing. I'm jumping on its back and I'm like, I know where your wires are. Yeah. Yeah. I would say you'd have an advantage on a tinkering check. Oh, okay. Okay. Only because you you've seen this model before. Okay. So I'm gonna target standard roll. It doesn't necessarily prompt a roll for me, so I think that roll that I did earlier, that was the macro for it's uh a D twenty plus four plus three, I think maybe is my proficiency bonus doubled. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. Fuck dude. I can't it won't let me do the thing. It should be your proficiency plus to double your modifier, that'd be your intelligence. Which my intelligence modifier is uh, four. An eight plus three plus the d20 with advantage. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to do this, like just roll it. Uh, what is it, slash roll? I always forget. Yeah, slash, yeah, slash roll. roll. Slash roll, uh, advantage, so two, d20. Plus eleven. Uh, <laughs> eleven, essentially. No, that's what he said, though. No, it's yeah. essentially. Yeah, you're right. Three. Yeah, that's eleven. Okay, deep breath. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Just breaks around Kitty, and I grab at the back of this uh, automaton's back panel, and I find the wire and sinew and the. Uh, the vial, and I just jam my hands in there, tools and all, and just start ripping and tearing uh, effectively. Uh. Let's go. Okay. Oh, no, you didn't do the keep highest. Yeah. Oh, well, so it'd be hold on. 15 plus 11. So, 27. 27. Yeah, we have 27, not a 35. Okay. Yeah, 27. As uh, it's like kind of rotating around between the three individuals fighting it, you uh, you jump on its back. Uh, its back panel already uh, pretty much charred to bits from your previous firebolt. Um, you finally just rip it off and you begin digging in with your uh, with a set of your tools, and you manage to rip out several of its key like uh, servos on the inside. And with uh, uh, in a typical uh, a smoking fashion, um, as you rip these out, uh, you see all the the gears uh, kind of begin to, for a moment, they turn significantly faster, and then you see it uh, shut down as the vial on the back um, that had been fueling it this time had about ha has about half of it left. Um, you see uh, all of its gears stop and like kind of begin to seize as it falls to its knees and falls to the ground. I just Awkward land on its back. Disabled. And hold it, and I'm like my pulling its vial out, and I'm like, "You were abused. I'm gonna fix that." And I point my finger at that mage, and I go, "You're next." Uh, and I think that's my turn. Okay. That'll bring us. Well, first off, is my music stop or is it rotate? Asking the important questions here. It's stopped altogether. Well, we can't have that. Okay. 
Back to where we were. Durgar. Okay, so it says the friendly Durgar is going to begin attacking its uh, its counterpart. Blanking, it'll have advantage. Nineteen will hit for eight damage. Who's the mage attacking? Durgar, well, the mage just attacked Big Two on its last turn, but the Durgar up on top is attacking the, uh... Oh, the, the, mage's turn, yeah. the, the neutral one, sorry. Correct. That'll be his turn. Assassin is incapacitated. The Clockwork Mage's turn. Alright. All of you... I think, yeah, so everybody who had been had lost their connection to the weave going forward, you now have that. Um, as I think everybody who has affected their turn has passed now. Um, what is it going to do? It is going... Ooh. It is going to... It does not have any 4th level spells, but it has one 4th level slot. It is going to use Magic Missile. Oh, <laughs> On who? That's rude. a great question. That's rude. I didn't say it wasn't. On Tilly. He's going to upcast a Magic Missile. He could target whoever he wants. I think he's going to attack Ono, oh Victune, and Miris. No, be probably long. Aethros. Actually, it'll just attack everyone. I'm it'll attack everyone. Said, I'm just happy you said more than one person. <laughs> <laughs> so does a total of six darts. It's going to it'll be... Two on Ono, two on Victune, and then one on each of oh. Miris and Aethros. Kind of like spreading them out, starting with the closest foes. Alright, what do we got? Each dart does a total of five damage. Oh, well, I'm down, so. I'm down. And then Miris and Aethros, each of you also take a total of five damage. Alright. I... Yeah, I'm fine. So you hit me with two bolts? Two bolts to you, two so bolts to the tune, one for Miris. Yeah, I'm down. Even with yep. the damage HP. Wait, did I get any? No, there's it, even no, with. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I'm down. Yep, me too. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm logging off for tonight. <laughs> <Bro, laughs> shut up! Come on. <laughs> um. And it is going to spend it's next week. <laughs> its last vial to cast a cantrip. Uh, no, never mind. It's actually going to cast Magic Missile at first level one more time. But that'll be its last expandable charge. And it's going to target Aethros with all three of them. So you see these bursts of, like, force, uh, like, small bursts of force energy, uh, glimmer out with a shrieking sound at many of the people... Uh, even you watch as, like, your party gets pummeled by these things. Sorry. Each of these darts do four damage, so it would be an additional 12 damage to you, Aethros. Alright. But, that'll be all it can do for damage. It is going to... It has 
30 feet of movement. Flying in the air, it is going to move right there. Still hovering at 30 feet. Um, and that'll be the clockwork mage's turn. <laughs> so now that, that that pulse is over, does me being incapacitated stop my enlarge? Correct. Okay. Yep, with the pulse being gone. Oh god, I just remembered. If I, if I get back up, is it still over? Um, if you get back up, I believe... Ooh, that's a good question with a large reduce. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say, for the sake of fun, yes, you can get it back, if you get back <laughs> up. Okay. I'll have to push these people away, because the big guy up there has to get big again. Just the battle of the kaiju up on the top. Um, yeah, okay, so, I think that's two, oh, the big Duragar boy. Gonna attack the traitorous Duragar. That will make purchase. damage. Okay. Um, and that'll bring us to Ibrahim. As you just watched your party get pummeled by streaks of force energy. Right, and I saw the mage move like somewhere up here. Yep. Uh, Yeah, just flat around. Not like you can't move now. Especially because you probably want to get back into Ben's thing, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your HP again. Movement. Uh, how do I want to do that? Pulls out the longbow. Um... Building for dramatic effect. <laughs> uh, hey, we're I'm almost going... on the one page of enemies now. We're, uh... we're whittling them hmm. down little by little. <laughs> I am going to... to... I'm going to use steady aim, and then I'm going to attack the mage. My you have to... Steady aim requires you to not move first. Fuck, that's right. Damn it! Ugh! Been so long. I'm trying to just shoot him. Yeah. Pretty shot. And target the mage. Okay. There you go. Love to see see you go. Hit. Just normal, no sneak attack or anything, correct? Uh, there would be no sneak attack, correct. Oh, yeah. Up. Alright. For 11 damage. Okay. As you, yeah, you hit it, you do see that it, it seems a bit worse off than what it was at the beginning of the battle. Um, but it is still uh, ticking and ready to go. I guess as a bonus action, I'm going to hold the dodge ability. I don't really have anything else to do. Do you, what do you mean by hold the dodge? Dodge is a standard action. Right, but like cunning action, I can dodge, disengage. You stuff can like dash, that. dash, disengage, and hide. If you don't have dodge, that's a monk thing. Uh, Unless you used your standard action, you could hold your standard action I mean, to dodge, but you. It might do so. 
Might be worth it to hide then. Make it so that way they have to see you, you know, like, you know, roll perception to see you in order to hit you. Yeah. I don't have anywhere to hide and I already used my 30 feet of movement. You just, no, you, like, you just hide in place. You don't have to, like, hide behind something. Yeah, yeah you make a, right. you can make a stealth check to hide, technically. Yep. Um, especially since you're, it's in a, you'd be in a lightly obscured area because of Aethros' dome. But, uh, you would have to make a stealth check. So, yeah, no more. Or... dead bodies. What's the worst <laughs> thing that happened? Yeah. Normal or Real. advantage? Normal. Okay. Let's go. Yep. Okay. You are nice. the knight. You feel very confident that you are, uh, you kind of like try to blend into the, the side of this, uh, platform with your yellow and red clothing, mimicking the, the heat from the forge. You, you feel confident that you're not being seen right now. And then, as far as any temp, uh, Aethro, some good. I don't need any. Because you have that back now, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, Aethros, you're up. Alright. Bonus action, healing word on Ono. Uh, as a level one. Find it on my spell list. Let's go. Yeah. Health to you. Okay. And then I'm yeah. going to, with my regular action, use my healing hand feature. Ooh, there you go. Let's go. Um, it should heal you five hit points. Oh, yep. Formula worked. Um, on me? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It didn't give it to me at first. It must have just took a second or decoded, did it? Didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I took care of it for you. I don't know why it didn't kick for you. It, it's yeah. stupid. Half the things are broken, and I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's all right. This is a love-hate uh, relationship uh, we have. Action and bonus action. Uh, and then, end of my turn, I'll give myself temp HP. Nice. Very nice. Fine. And yeah, that's it. All right, big tune. As you uh, as you return to consciousness, okay. Um, I'm going to make this easy. The dead body moves as you. I mean, I will give you the option to choose whether or not you enlarge again, if you want to yeah. gain that effect. I do. <laughs> As you become a beefy boy once again. Look up. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Big kitty. So could he like step over that trough? Um, He's so he big could. now? It will be uh, technically an athletics check, but he will have advantage on that check with his size. Sweet. Just to, like avoid the, the lava pouring through. Yeah. Um... Grab him and just throw him in the lava. Yeah. <sighs> There's not much left. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, because I mean, I could just cast fireball or firebolt. You could. Oh, <laughs> I could do the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just worried that I'm going to miss. <laughs> I mean, look, man, we, we, no. what are we playing this game for, bro? Why? Yeah, why do we play this game? In the hands of the dice. Staying yeah, in the circle too hard. to get the temp HP is probably the smarter move. Uh, well, I mean, I, I got I plenty of healing so far. Show for it. I, 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 I can also still you. stay in that in that thing. All right, yeah, <laughs> I'd like to, if, if if you'll allow, to pick up Ono. <laughs> Oh and, god, he's uh, gonna try this. Do it. I'm, I'm it, screwdriver and hammer in hand. Does it does it change uh, anything about me trying to traverse this? Uh, like the advantage I would have, like over the if the you have here. Ono in your on your person. 
Yeah, if I just like pick him up, because I mean, I'm, I'm now small. God, no, you're, you're two I'm sizes bigger than him right now. Dude, I'm, I'm, even, yeah, yeah, I'm small. It's not going to affect anything for you. Okay, then I would like to uh, attempt to... Is it? Oops. Yeah, target myself, dummy. Okay, I want and you to make an athletics to go check. To there. Yep. He did say with advantage. Yes, I did. Yep. Okay, as you take a step. Edge over a 10. Now, just remember, Victim by default was already 6'9. I know, I know. Huge. Kitty is huge. You take a total. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, God. Well, Come on. They try to just transport it. <laughs> Is it too so, late to throw the gnome? Is it too... It's too late to throw the gnome. However, you do successfully cross the uh, the, the the trough before this kicks in, but your uh, second step, you end up stepping in the lava slightly. You take a total of five fire damage. <laughs> For God's sakes, man. It was 2d6, Wait. you take half, and you it rolled a 10, so... If you take five. And it... You're back after. down to zero, I take it. I sure am. He's not on fire, though, right? Correct. I'm, he is not just, on fire. Just, he uses a very I'm charred just, foot. So, up and down. Up and I'm down. I'm just the inevitable. Bro, don't but say like, that. Stop. Like... We're working for it. Because, like, you do successfully I mean, cross I'm, with Ono. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Because I just... I just I mean, I'm yeah, 13 and a half feet tall. Like, I don't know how this <laughs> no, is just like a your baby stride, Your stride alone like, yeah, has got him. Come yeah. on. Yeah. The hands were in oh. the fate of the athletics yeah, yeah, yeah. with advantage. And with advantage, we rolled an 11. I did, I did. Uh, yeah, I know what the, what the save would have or the, the, yeah, the success would have been. 13. But I need like mm -hmm. you were close. Yeah. Right. Can, I can I bolster his? <laughs> nope. We tried that already. I, I know. I I mean I don't have a reaction. I can't do guidance as a reaction, but could I go <laughs> like come on something? This is the I don't have bardic inspiration, but can like I gnomish <laughs> inspiration? A sympathetic D6. Nope. I'm like, we're going still, across. I'm still like, ends yeah, up dude, rolling like yeah. a wand. Wait, why are we going? Why are you getting shorter? What's wrong? Holy shit, he's down. You like set him down, and as you oh as you uh, as you set him down, you feel like this sharp pain in your foot <laughs> as you step in the lava, and uh, the shock from that unfortunately knocks you back out. But you safely Man. move Ono across the battlefield. Well, he's still in the circle, but we get temp you know, he, he is out of. Like, because he shrank, he's out of range of danger from being burned again, correct? Correct. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I, so I don't get any of that temp HP then, right? Not until you are oh. conscious again. Back up, yeah. Okay. This is the best game. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, well, sure. <laughs> Nick, Nick over here ripping apart paper. <laughs> All right, that'll bring us to the Clockwork Defender. Who's going to attack the big boy? God, this music is fire. I need this playlist on everything. It's literally just like Final Fantasy battle music, because I can't use YouTube anymore, because it has stopped my ad blocker. Yeah. 21 will hit. Let me roll for damage. Oh, perfect. As the defender, like, beats in the freaking super big guy's knees. I'll knock him to zero. Alright, that's what's up. Good machine. Doing your job. Doing amazing work. Bloop, bloop, bloop. 
Um, and it's going to move up to the other guy. And attack it as well. Um, that is still hit. Holy Jesus Christmas. Okay. For an additional 11 damage. Or right. the other guy didn't take any damage up to this point, so he is still standing. Alright. Bringing us to that Duragar. Oh, never mind. That was... That one... That was not the one I was supposed to... I hid the wrong one. From the initiative, because he's not an initiative anymore. Anyway. Uh, be this guy. who pissed off is going to attack the clockwork defender. I would describe all of these attacks, but they really don't matter to many people. Just me in the initiative order as it gradually gets smaller. <laughs> hey, at least now it doesn't take an hour and 20 minutes to go through one round. You're freaking right, though. <laughs> like, kudos, you know, snaps and everything, but holy crap, dude. Yeah, I've been Six trying to speed Quagos. up. I think it was like uh, 14 Durgar. He had Stop 22 it. people at first. <laughs> plus, then he still had the Simulacra, <laughs> the BBG. Oh, man. Oh, I know. This is my belt. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh Back to back. Those are Why is that so perfect. true, though? It's so perfect, though. Come on. <laughs> it was so good. So, so true. Uh, right. Miris, it is your turn. The clockwork assassin is incapacitated on the ground. Um, the clockwork mage is in the air across the lava. You see, you would witness Big Tune shrinking once again as, uh, as he sets Ono down on the other side. Um... And then you can hear the commotion coming from at the top. The <laughs> clockwork defender and a large Duragar kind of going at it. Um, but that's what's going on right now. What would you like to do? Uh, I think I'll move closer to the uh, clockwork mage and then use uh, chill touch. Okay. Uh, okay. Go for it. That is going to hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. As you, uh, while you didn't feel like it would uh, do what you would like against the assassin, uh, you, you ready yourself and you try it again against the, the mage who, uh, damn. Okay, that was really sad for the damage roll. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you the heat feel wave like... is messing up his necrotic energy. There we go. There we go. For a touch, uh, for a, a t for an attack that has chill and touch in the name, you ponder a little too long about the fact that it makes no sense that it is named that when it does not, in fact, do any of that, and it throws you off of your game. Alliteration aside, you know, it's it's chilling because it's necrotic energy. You know, it's, it's the best name spell. <laughs> Good job, Mirrors. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and technically, it cannot recover any health until the end of your turn, your next turn, I think. Um... Not that it was regaining health, but still, it is an effect that it has. Noise. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay. Did, I bring yeah, did you do your? Uh, did you do your pinky ring? I'm at full, so I don't have to do it. Oh, okay. Um, did you want? Uh, it. I guess you have two temporary HP if Aethris wants to give you more. Oh yeah, I'll give him more. Okay. <laughs> There you go. Oh, you're at 10, 10 HP. Nice. God, that power is ridiculously strong. Just a Love 10 boy, HP like regen, man. like, every fucking burn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, well, and it only gets sick. stronger. Like, when you... Uh -huh. God, a level 20 cleric is insane. Anyway. 
Twilight Cleric. Cleric. Gotta be specific. That'll bring us to the Sheriff. Officially this time. Um. Oh, there we go. Doing the good work. Okay. Sheriff is gonna come up behind and is going to pull out his crossbow. And good work, Sheriff. Fire off a few shots. I can't see any of this. <laughs> From my angle, it's like he's the mage is thirty feet still up in the air. From just north and to the left, so like north ten feet and to the left, yeah, he's pretty much the sheriff is closing the distance. And even further north and to the left that our clockwork defender is doing some serious work off over there that I just started to see. The mage, will he hits the mage with a, uh, a nice crossbow shot. Um, nice. It is still able to maintain its flight. He's gonna attack it one more time. Oh, man, of course the crossbow does way better than, the, than everything else. Um, and let's roll another check. And it's kicking. Okay. As uh, he fires off two shots, both of them make purchase in the back of the the clockwork uh, mage. And you, uh, oh no, you kind of see a very similar series of events that uh, happened with the uh, with the assassin. Um, you can kind of hear like gears beginning to turn um, a bit more heavily as one of his uh, arrows made purchase somewhere that it probably shouldn't have through a, a bit of its armor plating. Um, it's a hurting unit, but it is still able to maintain its flight. Excellent. Tilly, wanting to help finish this off. Two, three, four, five. Is she within range to do anything? She is going to cast out a Ray of Frost at the Clockwork Mage. We'll do it. 18 is going to hit. Okay. As uh, she fires off another shot um, of chilling energy, or fires off a shot of chilling energy at the Clockwork Mage. Um, you see that the frost kind of uh, it kind of takes hold on the front of its uh, on the front of its form, not by choice, as uh, this creature is uh, it's not going to last much longer. You get this very strong feeling as you uh, as you see it uh, right before you, Ono, as it's your turn. Ah. <sighs> As I'm setting him down, it's just we are big two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I yeah, I'm kind of like over top of Kitty in a defensive mode. Like, I get that, buddy. I get that. Just, just, stay, just stay right there. Just keep breathing. You're okay. You're okay. And I uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna huck a firebolt in this uh, mage's direction. Although I don't want to set them ablaze, so I will follow suit with uh, um, Hilly's mode, and I will alter my firebolt to do cold damage, and I will still target the mage and give it the what for. I will, before you roll your dice, stop with Big Tune carrying you across. I will give you DM inspirational advantage on your attack. Okay. I mean, <laughs> okay. It motivates I, I, you to finish this quickly. I was, believe me, I, I, I want nothing more than to uh, crit all over this, this creature. Okay. Uh, stop walking around all weird. Uh, target the mage. Why won't did I? There it is. Firebolt attack. Uh, advantage. Shabloosh. I'll do that. I'll take that. That's what's up. 24 is going to hit. Okay, cool. And I'm, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm all, I'm all out of jazz. I'm just more, I'm done. I'm, 
You're going in the sack, both of you. Big tune, big, I... big tune. Oh no, how do you want to do this? Yeah, no, I. Hey. Yeah, I huck. I twist my fireball. I'm very upset. Kitty's been knocked down. We've all been knocked down several times. I'm furious. I'm I just enraged by the tyrant and his stupid tyranny of fuck ignorance. I you abuse machinery and you force my hand. And I point a firebolt, cock my fingers to the side like you know West Coast style, and just ice this fool. Uh, and as soon as he hits the ground, I turn. I don't even care. Like in it, like in that battle scene where like the the creature hits the ground and the ice shatters. I don't even care to see. I turn over to Big Tune and I'm like, Kitty, 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 Kitty. Uh, and I'll do whatever it takes, whatever action. If we're out of initiative, going out of initiative, I'm gonna just prepare to stabilize Kitty. Okay. So, so it was like, so it was like the mage clockwork just become a bicycle and then drop it freezes over um you would see like it's uh it's frozen form uh, or like the metal i should say on it take on a um, crystalline uh ice-like uh appearance as it falls to the ground it doesn't shatter into bits but it uh it falls with a loud thud very rigid um the servos stop all life and light from within the uh the mage itself disappears leaving just its physical form. Uh, ben, I think I'm in your aura, if uh, yeah. at all possible. I'm allowed. Steve. Mm -hmm. okay, I will take that eight. Hot 16 with that. All right. It's not to bring us to the last. more than me. Uh, there's one more Durgar at the top. I think for sake of simplicity, I mean, it'll probably be dead by the end of this turn. I'm going to say that between the large Durgar and the clockwork uh, soldier, or sorry, defender, the two of them are able to finish off that last Durgar. You can kind of give him the honorary upgrade as soldier at this point. <laughs> All right. So now are we out of combat? As you... You expect to hear more, like, you, you expect to hear more Duragar coming down the way, but after um, almost a minute of waiting and listening and checking if everyone's okay, you don't hear anything else coming. Um, right. To stabilize cool. Aether, well, to stabilize uh, Big Tuna, it'd be a medicine check. I, will, uh, I would just use Healing Word to heal, uh, heal him up. Oh, okay, that's fine. If you, if you heal him and I see that, then cool. I point to the sky. Uh, to where I think uh, this jerk is, uh, and I'm gonna cast message, and hopefully I hit him. He's with, hopefully within like the what, maybe thirty or forty, wait, maybe like a hundred minute, few minute, maybe a minute or two. Uh, we've okay. been battling. I'm gonna cast message, and I'm gonna scream in this tyrant's head. We're coming for you, you. Better just stay right where you are. Don't even bother with that stupid machine you sent up. Yeah, that I wouldn't... can't target Big Tune while Ono's on him. Oh, here, I'll get out of the way. Sorry. Yeah. Right. I would implore, like, when the first, like, six, 12 seconds roll by that they're picking up Big Tune, if somebody could help me investigate these bodies real quick and maybe give me guidance, that'd be great. Um, I want to search all the bodies. I'm looking for health potions, oh, well, anything that can essentially help the party. Gold loot, health That's potions, ten, the whole the whole jazz. And ten, ten. Yeah. Sick. Um, well, before I can get to you to help you, if you're doing that, I want these automatons. And I, as soon as Big Tune's up. As soon as I try to cast that message, I don't care for a reply. I don't even care if it works or not. And I rush the mage and stuff it in the bag of holding. And then if we can make it across, I'm going to stuff the clockwork assassin in the bag of holding too. Um, <laughs> you will need to I mean, choose go between the two because the weight would be exceeding your limit. Will it? Okay, these are heavy, heavy. Okay. Um, uh, assassin is lighter weight, but... Oh, wait, no. No, you'd be good. 
Um, I was gonna say because I have less. Do you have less than a hundred pounds worth of stuff in your bag of holding right now? I don't even think that girl weighs forty pounds. The girl even frozen in an ice block. That girl was like barely eighty pounds or something like that. Uh, and I have in my own inventory. Uh, less let like hold on if i have all i don't have all of my stuff i have just like all like my stuff on my backpack but a bag of holding probably has i mean i can hold up to 500 pounds how much does that girl weigh i don't really have them i'm only supplies have gone in there so uh, there's probably there's probably less than like maybe a hundred pounds in in the bag of holding right now okay um she would weigh yeah roughly about 80 pounds Right. Uh, worth of ice. So, so supplies um, and all, probably about 100 pounds. Okay, you would be, with the two clockwork in there too, you would be at your limit. I mean, um, at the bag of holding. Okay. Like, you might have about another, like, 10 pounds worth of leeway, but you feel that this is going to max them out, having three, three rather large items within there with a bit of weight. Okay, okay, okay. Do you need help putting those in there? I mean, I technically can, I can, I, I'm pretty sure I can put them in there. I just, I mean, losing appendages. I can lift them. No, I know, no, 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 it's not about the lifting. I'm, I, honestly, I can like drag the bag. I start to drag the bag over the mage because I definitely want the mage. So I'm like dragging the bag over the mage's head and like scooching it around its shoulders and then bringing it and you just watch it go. <laughs> okay, that's one. <laughs> that's one. I definitely want the mage. Now the assassin. The assassin if you is don't very... want it, I'm going to take a piece of it. No, I mean, like, honestly... Oh, we I want the just... whole thing. We do want the whole thing. We really want mm -hmm. the whole thing. And honestly, I could probably make another bag of holding tomorrow morning if we get a night's rest, but that would take up another thing that I was going to do regardless. It doesn't matter. Okay. <sighs> Mr. you have tempted me with yet another... I, I scurry over and I just jam the thing in the bag. You, you are another item that I need to break down. Yeah, so I'll scurry whatever it takes to run around the thing. Yeah. If Wait, you're... as I do this, hold on. Is there anything in this forge area that's worth me picking up? Can I, real quick, make a perception check on this forge? Anything worth Ono's time? Like, is there any mithril components? Is, like, I, I, there's small stuff that is light enough for me to stuff onto my own person or other people's persons, like the ingredients, I don't want to say it out loud, but uh, the ingredients to make a, a boom boom bag, uh, effectively. A, a B-O-M-B -B 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 -B. I mean, like, yeah, there should be saltpeter and ash and a whole bunch of stuff. Is that in this area worth more to, like, here? Yes or no? Make a perception check. I would know. say that if it was anything, if there's anything there, this is definitely the place that it's going to be. I got it myself. And Shush. was somebody, uh, before I forget, um, Ebrin, you were going to check the bodies of all of them? Yeah, I, I want to check the bodies, if there's any good loot, gold, health potions. Uh, I remember Owen said way in the beginning of the entirety of our quest here, he's looking for some rare residual type thing for his own thing so Carlin. i want to see if Carlin. yeah i want to see if anyone's maybe got whatever that might be um i was hoping that either ono or ben could give me Aetheros could give me the guidance and then maybe mirrors could give me the help action to get advantage yeah i can give you guidance boom mirrors you want to help me look these, over these bodies real quick man sure let's do it there we go boom. oh my god I mean, hey, that's yeah, that's good. <laughs> I saw the top one of that guy. My heart just went. Um, going in order. Ono, oh you do find three. Well, you find two. I would say two and a half ingots worth of uh of mithril uh material. Uh, they're yeah. like they're like getting ready to be poured into the forge. Um, but they haven't entered yet. You would find a th like uh a half of one like it's been, like melted off and it's like beginning to. Uh, heat to the point where it's becoming liquidated, cool. but uh, if you wanted to take the extra half, you you would be able to you just like pull it away, and let it cool down first. Cool. Yeah. So you said is it three or two? What did you said two? Like two and a half total. Two and a half. So okay. two of them that haven't melted, a half of one still not melted. Okay. All right. Well, I will definitely take that mithril. That's what's up. 
And then I look at this assassin and I'm like, Kitty, we're going to break this thing down. We're taking the essential pieces of this. I don't want to take this whole thing. I want this whole thing, but I, we're, I, we, we need essentials. We got to get the hell out of here. Um, going off of your investigation check, you what find... What would zero be in my roll, real quick? Not the... Who's all doing this right now? Because right I, I got the 2d20 plus 2 plus 0 plus 6 plus the 1d4. What's the 0? I should be proficient in investigation. Well, then I don't think that's your investigation. Whatever, 24 is still high enough. I don't I don't care. Let's... Well, I care. What's your intelligence? But I, I do. Uh... You're proficient. The six is your expertise. Okay. Yeah. The two comes from your uh, modifier. I don't know what the plus zero is for, but the number itself that you rolled is accurate. Okay, I just want to make sure, because my intelligence is 14, but it's a plus five, and I was like, um... Didn't know if it should be higher or not. Okay, so no, okay, yeah, that's my four. The end one's your plus oh. two. Yeah, so the one on the left is your for checks. The one on the right for intelligence is for saving throws. You have a plus five to saving throws. You have a plus two to checks. Ah, that's right. I always forget that. Who's all doing this all right. right now? Uh, Miris is helping me. If you want to, I guess investigate too. You can. Is there anything? Yeah. No, is there anything I... that Big Tune or Aethros would want to do as Miris and? Yeah. Oh no, investigate. Yeah. You also are able to investigate bodies. It doesn't just have to be one person, but it's entirely no, up to no. you whether or not you want to. I would like to see if Aetheros would like to go with me into the room that uh, Big Bad Boy went into. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. first, I would like to look around this room to see if there's anything that's invisible that I can see currently, because I have the invisibility. Mm. Oh and yeah, dude. Hiding anything. There is nothing extra that is invisible within this room. As you take a walk around it, you, um, any of the Duragar that you suspect could be lingering, you don't see anybody. There doesn't seem to be any other life besides the group here. Okay, then I'll go with Big Tune. All right, well, let's go in here and investigate them, right? Okay. Oh. I'm going to deactivate your aura, just because it's annoying. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Hello. I can see a lot better now. Oh, that's better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I would say for the sake of, uh, for the sake of Ibrin, looking through all of the bodies, you find a grand total, amongst all of them, um, 150 gold pieces. <laughs> you find a couple rings, um, that are on... A few of the Duragar that have like a ruby inlaid at the top. They look kind of similar to the cursed ring that you, or the ring that you have on your person. Um, but it's uh, there's no magical effects that you can feel coming off of them just from a glance. Um, they just seem to be ornate rings. Um, total value of those, there's a total of six rings. Um, the total value of those comes to about 50 more gold pieces. For the sake of ease of numbers, let's just make it 60. Um, okay. and then, uh, you do find that on one of the guards that you had fought, one of the Durgar, you do find another ring with a small black, um, small black looking, uh, stone on the top, but it gives off the same aura of, like, uh, dark energy yeah. that you, uh, had felt from previous experiences with Charlatan in your travels here as the group. Um, so you'd find one charlatan ring on Ooh. one of the uh, one of the Duragar. Okay. Um, do I find any arrows, anything that we can resource-wise of value that way? Arrows in particular because I'm at 8 out of 20. That ain't the end of the world, but if there's a couple I could snag. Um, the Duragar themselves didn't carry bows or anything, or crossbows. They carried javelins. So you would oh, find right. a total of, like, I mean, almost all of them had at least three javelins on their person. So 
however many javelins you wanted to grab within your ability to carry. And or... Not proficient, and that's too much I can, weight. I can make you arrows. That's not a big deal. It doesn't take me very long to make arrows. Um, and none of them had, like, any parchment, orders, letters, gems, uh, anything like that? Nope. They uh, okay. seem to be, when they work, they seem to have been working light. So you did not see anything uh, extra on their person. Um, I would say Aethros and Bictune, the two of you walking into this chamber, the first major thing that you see is you see uh, several uh, large, um, uh, what do you want to call them? Yeah, let's go like, uh, they'd be beakers. Uh, you would see, oh. well, for, the biggest thing you see is a large statue of Oral, uh, yeah. in the center of the room, her in, like, a, uh, attacking position with, like, a, a bolt of frozen energy, as if she's trying to strike somebody down. Um, at the base of this statue, you would see several empty, uh, potion bottles. Um, mm. you see, like, there's a small hint of, like, red liquid in, like, one of them, you kind of pick it up and look around or look at it, um, it looked like used healing potions, and you see two stands in the room on the far end uh, that seem to have been stationing the the mage and the assassin um, when they were dormant. You see several doors that lead to other rooms. Um, four of them, you see one of them is opened, oh, five of them, I should say. Four of them are opened, one of them uh, being on the far side here, it seems to be locked as you... Uh, head that direction um, but there's a total of four other rooms or four other doorways that right here. I guess I'll go into here this is I just hey going into the room there you find essentially a weapons cache um, so like an armory if you're looking for anything like a halberd or a warhammer or uh, some javelins you would be able to, uh, you can pick up pretty much any singular uh, martial weapon that you might be interested in. The Durgar, uh, for the most part, carry heavy weaponry that usually requires two hands. Um, let me take a look once. There's something that There's I'm nothing missing. special, just all generic. All standard equipment in that room. I'm just double checking something quick. You want to work our way clockwise, then, Aethros? Sure. Um. Okay, the two of you are on top of each other. I was like, where in the world did the both of you go? Okay. Um, yeah. The official weapons that are listed in here are... Six war picks, nine war hammers, a dozen javelins, ten heavy crossbows, and a nicked great axe. Bro. A nicked great axe? Yeah, so it's a, a great axe, but with like a chunk out of one of the uh, sharp edges. Okay. What the cast detect magic? Okay. And I'll see if I see anything glowing with magic. The nice thing is the spell lasts a little while, but currently in this room, there is nothing innately magical. It seems to just be a standard uh, supply room for like in case there was some form of breach like what you guys have had here um, and they weren't working at the time it appears to be just weapons in case of emergency okay gotcha. but I want to try to peek in these other doors yep. okay. or you said this door is locked that one there is locked um, okay and then there's those other two doors there. let me take a look at what I got Is there an extra bag of holding I find anywhere? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the 
If only. I mean, I still have room in our bag of holding. I'm not putting the entire assassin in here. I'm going to try to break down the assassin and just take yeah. like, essential pieces. Cut him in half like C-3PO and just carry the other half. I mean, yeah, but these things are heavy. I was gonna say, if it frees up enough weight, you should take the heavy crossbows. I mean, I'm just gonna, uh, my thought is, I'm taking, uh, I'm taking the torso, the uh, one arm, and the head intact, and one arm is coming off and two legs are coming off, because those are weight, unnecessary weight. I technically only need the one arm. What if I want you to make me a cool arm out of one of those arms? That's the mm -hmm. that's the point. I'm using the one arm to replicate. I only need the one arm for schematics and replication. What if I want that exact arm? Well, then I guess I guess, I guess you take the but one that I, I want I just... a right arm and you have a left arm. Yeah. <laughs> what if I want two extra arms like they had? How do you feel about holding an, a disassembled appendage of an automaton? Uh as long as it weighs less than 50 pounds. As you go through this room here, um, for the most part, it seems to be just basic ration supplies, but as you look a bit deeper, you see there are a couple things on the ground. Um, the first thing that you find, um, and it really, at first, they can't kind of seem to blend in, but with your uh, detect magic uh, currently going, you find a ring of warmth. Ooh. Um, underneath, like, a pile of, like, it's like an open bag of grain or something that's, like, buried in there. Um, and you see on the far end of the room, um, in the back corner, two large, well, not large, it'd be two, uh, it'd be, like, parchment-sized tablets. Um, what languages do you read? Well, Aethor can't really read, but he oh, yeah, recognizes... Sure. Languages Celestial. that you recognize. Sorry, that's a yeah. good call. <laughs> Celestial, Common, Draconic, and Goblin? You see two tablets um, in the far corner in a language that you do not recognize. They emanate... Uh, they emanate magical... Uh, they emanate magical presence. It gives off feelings of evocation but they it doesn't seem like it's hostile it just seems like it's just a magical presence like whatever wrote these um had uh they wrote it with some sort of either magic device or they left a part of themselves within it um well, doesn't seem to be hostile to the next time I see doesn't feel like a spell it just emanates magic yeah so i pick up all that stuff then okay I can add a ring of warmth to your inventory. When I would finish up my investigating, I would. What is? Uh, you cut off there, John. At least for me. I said, um, while I'm investigating, I'd look up and see what uh, Zabane and Tilly are doing. You would see uh, Tilly. Uh, tending to Zavane's wounds. Okay. Um, I would kind of end my investigating uh, next to Quill. I would pick up what I can of Quill and walk over to them and be like, hey, um, <clears throat> I, uh, as I'm kind of awkwardly saying this, um, I know we uh, have some trust issues, but I'm sorry for your fallen comrade. How do you want to take care of this. Given that we're not, I have no real ability to carry his corpse, and uh, there's no homeland for us to go to, since the rest of my people are enslaved. I think it would make fitting sense to just let him burn up in the forge okay unless you're planning hey. on using this forge i think it would be better to let his body disappear i would nod of gesture and 
I would gesture for her to follow and to the forge and be like, do you want to say anything in honor of him? Quill was a good... He was a, he was a good man. He... Sorry, my dog decided to howl. I thought yeah. that was literally what she was going to say. So Look, like, no. your dog is feeling Quill's right. loss. Sorry. You're good. I'm just waiting for them to stop. Because I can't talk and expect you to hear me otherwise. It's not your dog's wailing, it's the bane without a tongue, like, wailing. <laughs> yeah, is that is that Maisie or Cleo? That's Maisie. Maisie's the only one who owls. Oh, okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. Nobody else would know that, but, uh... She's being egged on right now by family members through FaceTime. So... <laughs> they're being little shits! <laughs> <laughs> anyway... It's fine. The, the Edge Lord guy is just trying to have a sincere moment for one. <laughs> Your dog's <laughs> ruining my heartfelt moment, dude. Right. <laughs> as uh, as Quill's body kind of gets put into the lava, she would utter out. Hopefully, this time, Quill was a good man. He was the first person that we cut the markings. That um. Uh, made him succumb to the minds of the drow. He always had my back when we were disappearing through the Underdark. I couldn't have asked for someone better to help me navigate this, and I'm sorry to see him go. The Fleet of Foots, we will survive. We will carry on his name as best as we can. I would slowly put Coel into the fire and as I'm doing that I would say um, just an elvish prayer that my father and mother taught me and Quill would you know Quill would do what you'd expect the body to do getting entered into lava the terminator thumbs up <laughs> Just imagine, like, them, like, taking his crusted fingers and just making the thumbs up on his chest before throwing him in the fire. Is it actually just, <laughs> like, Schmeagol? He's actually just trying to crawl out of it right now, still. I'm still alive, guys! Oh, God! Oh, God, no, he's a corpse. It hurts! It hurts! <laughs> no, Quill's dead. Yeah. Yeah, no, because he's in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> um. 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 I don't know who all was out there that saw that, but I would, that, I would do that, whether Victune and Aethros were looting or not. Um, Aethros and Victune, you, as you walk through the open door, you do see, uh, you see the base of the lift that was used for uh, Zeradoc to disappear upwards out of the forge and up into the second story of the, of the, uh, of the fortress, or wherever the wherever the end of this leads to, I should say. Um, no magic items. No, no magic else. items. Magical. Okay. Okay. We're gonna step into here. Taking time, or a little bit of time here, to look through the uh, chests that are in this room. You find the equivalent of about. 150 uh, gold pieces between it'd be between gems and actual coins um, you do find a second ring of warmth that is uh, within one of these chests the chests themselves are not locked um, and then you find a significant number of like bedding type supplies um, as if like you know it like seems blanket, to be in prep say? what was that like blanket you do oh find God. more blanket <laughs> and like basic like bedroll type stuff as well as an additional 10 days worth of rations like it. 
the 10 days worth of rations. I'll take a couple blankets, because you never know. I always good. Y'all, you always gotta have blankets. But... Um, and this, then, yeah, uh... Big Tune can have that other ring. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can add too quick. You said there was heavy crossbows in here, nine of them? Correct. Are you going with the, just the standard weight on Wikidot for their weight? They should have their weight listed on the thing, but yeah, it'd be the standard weight. I'm going to take two of them. I'm going to try to rend the arms and legs from this assassin so it's just the torso and head. Ben, did you take to all cut the, the weight down? money yeah. worth of, like, Oh, bullshit. yeah, uh, I just have it written down, I was prepared, you could split it up once you all get back together. Yeah, no, yeah, well, yeah, okay, I just wanted to make sure before we... Um... Alright. I will so say, Elna, oh, if, if you cut off the arms and the legs of the assassin, uh, that would free up a total of about 50, uh, no, uh, 65 pounds worth Ooh. of weight. You want me to make a check, or is that just fine? Nah, I'm okay. It. If you take it, if you take your time to do it, I'll just do like, sure. yeah, it's like a, it's like a take twenty where you're doing it over a period of time, unless yeah. you want to do it in a hurry. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, I know the value of these machines. That's why I'm trying to take my time. That's why I want to make it not be ripping and tearing, but like definitely just like I'm gonna disassemble this in a way that at least what everybody in the party can like take an arm and a leg, so to speak while we travel and at least i'll have more time to work on it or at least get it somewhere safe um, we're all still late mentally right yep okay then i'll just make sure that i let everybody know hey if we want to get up and out of here the same way the dude went uh, just come over by me yeah. yeah i would really like to get the fuck out of here maris tilly zabane everybody we, we, we. uh so if the bad guy went up the lift, won't he just be there waiting for us? I mean, that's entirely possible. Um, and then they have that I'm... other thingy that they're putting the heart into? And if you're saying that there's empty potion bottles in that room that you guys just investigated, mm -hmm. yes, there's a good chance that he's better off than we are. Um, The Duragar sure. that turned to start fighting with you at the end would come up to the party um, kind of like, you know, shrinking down from their large size they would, uh, come to the party if he went up there by himself I don't think he's going to be long for this world he's heading yeah. on to Lady Grandolfa's territory the person I'm loyal to his betrothed oh, and she's been looking for a reason to get rid of him Oh, well then that's good, but like, he's unleashed a, a an automaton on the surface. That's not a good thing. No. Yeah, let's go take this dude out. I, mean, like, I, I like think that. I think it might be best if we all go have a word with her. He like looks super serious this entire time. Um, not really like he kind of kind of standoffish, but not hostile. I guess, like that middle ground. Inside check. Okay. <laughs> he is telling the truth. Sincere. You can tell that he doesn't like being around people he doesn't know, but he seems to indicate that there's probably more people like him wherever Zeradoc went to. That probably oh, has things under control up there. All right, fair. Um, you look uh, hardy and whale, so good deal. Uh, let's appreciate the help. Do you have a name? God damn it! But... <laughs> Would you like, like to join our crew? Raytheon. That's my name. My name is Dura. Last name Gar. You can call me Nolgan. Nolgan? Nolgan. 
Alright, Nogan. There. Alright, Nogan, well... If you are, um... On the side of your... Former... We'll say boss of... Betrothed... And, uh, you can get us at least... A... They won't attack you when you get there. Not You're as long sure as one of us is with you. You're sure? There were others of us scattered amongst his guard. But alas, they fell in battle before they realized you were going to win. I... And he would, like, point out the bodies as, like... Like, one of them is, like, nearby the room where, uh... <laughs> where uh, Zeradoc went into. This was one of them. And, like, it's one of them that, like, fell to... Uh, I think one of Big Toon's attacks. There's, like, cut marks all over him. But there's no offense here. We were only following orders. They didn't know. They attacked you thinking we were going to win and fend off the, uh... Well, fend off the invaders. But once you started slaughtering them in the masses, we real I realized, at least, this is our chance. Well, unless we're going to take a short rest here I'm good to go guys like I short rest is all well and good but I don't think Aetheris and I can handle a short rest and walk into another big fight let alone walk into a town and try to save it from a friggin automaton hell bent on murder saying you want a long rest I don't want to I just I'm afraid to suggest it because <laughs> no I'm, like I'm with you. I would like to rest. I am tired. No, I I'd look at Aetheros and be like, can you do the thing that Kanit did? The extra portal household oh. thing we went into? I think it's tapped. Mine's, different. Mine's better. Well, I know yours yeah. is better. It's you. But do you have the ability to do that? Just in oh, case yeah, we... I, I would... Uh, I, I'm, I think... I'm sorry, Dr Draugr, Durgar, uh... I'm, Nolgan. Uh, Nolgan, my apologies. Okay, uh, Nolgan, not to be rude, but I kind of think we're about to crash, uh, amongst the dead brethren of yours. Um, hope you're okay with a nap. No objections? Cool. Hotness. I love that. I'm not um, saying that I don't object, but. You're Zeradoc, so, okay. the large draconic automata that you saw disappear up the lift, yeah. I know you all saw it. It's huge! It's going to destroy ten towns. Yeah, we, we gotta. We, I, I know we gotta get that done, but there's like, I got nothing in the bank. I'm telling Adrian. you, if I take you. With me, up to see Lady Grandolfa. No one's going to attack you there. I'm sure she'll right, want right, to right, work right. with you, given that I'm willing to bet 50 gold pieces. Zeradox probably either in shackles or dead. Alright, fine. And I. But if hand... you want to rest, you're more than welcome to. No, no, no. I shove in a polite way, more of like a here. I know a dwarves recognize, like, here, this is it, a tr show of trust. I hand Nolgan a leg of this assassin automaton, and I go, cool. You lead the way. You also get to carry a leg. Everybody, take an arm and a leg. And I shove the torso in the bag of holding, throw the bag of holding over my shoulders, uh, look at the forge, and go, ooh, that would have been nice to play with you, but no, we got other business elsewhere. I gotta fix this lift or get this damn carriage back down here and I start making for the room with the lift. Okay. Da, 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 da. Sorry, going through stuff on the screen. Hey guys. Yo! So you all make your way to the lift. Um, you're able to kind of all squeeze in. Um, and you see the Duragar, um, the last member of the group, uh, stand on the lift and pull the, uh, uh, pull one of the levers. Um, you see 
a large burst of what seems to be initially steam kind of shoot out from behind your feet. Um, and then the gears begin to turn and a large pulley system um, lifts you high up into the air. Um, this lift travels, uh, it would be the 50 feet that was the uh, ceiling height and then keeps going through uh, chiseled stone. Um, you all kind of scrunch really close as the tunnel is only like big enough for the for the lift to go through uh, for a significant portion of the journey upward. Um, the journey itself from the bottom to the uh, next story of the of the fortress, taking a I would say a grand total of about a minute and a half uh, with all the weight that is on here. The clockwork uh, automaton would hang back uh, for the first leg of this trip here, um, since it's it would be too heavy for the lift to go up with everybody else on it. And uh, you all reached the second story. Um, and as you do... Wait, wait, wait. Are we sure we want to leave the clockwork automaton behind, or have like some other people up behind? Once I introduce you, I can make a second trip. That's fine. Okay. I just want to make sure that you're not attacked when you get up here, as one of us did okay. survive. That would be an and, ideal. Uh, as you reach the stopping point of the, uh, of the lift, you see two other Duragar that are like uh, they begin moving towards the lift itself. Uh, initially, hammers are up in the air, like they're going to come in and prepare to attack, but they see their ally um, still alive. Uh, and he, like, puts his hand up, and uh, you see them immediately drop down to a ready position. He doesn't seem to have, like, authoritative power over them, but rather just him signaling that uh, we're friendly. Um, kind of puts them back in a standby. And they, like, affirmatively nod and uh, turn around and begin heading back into a, a different chamber. The top of this lift here, the room that you're in, um, I would say is about the same size as the one that you left from. So there's the lift in this small section and then it extends out about 30 feet by 20 feet. Um, but there's a long hallway that uh, leads out from this room about probably 15 feet um, and opens up into a large dining chamber. And uh, you see on the far end of this table facing towards the uh, towards the lift itself appears to be an older uh, Duragar woman. Um, it would be... Oh my god, I gotta find her picture so I can describe her a little bit better. Uh, long black hair wearing ornately decorated red robes um, with uh, furs inlaid um, or like at least like dyed furs to keep her warm. Um, you see... Uh, sitting on the table, on the uh, just in front of this woman, uh, off to the side, maybe by about two feet or so, seems to be a pseudo dragon, um, made entirely of charlatan, um, a living automaton of uh, in the, the size of a pseudo dragon and shape, uh, kind of keeping her company. What would the party like to do? Well, I guess, uh, I guess if we're allotted, uh, uh, hail and well met, uh, lady of the house, I would safely assume, um, we apologize for what I can safely assume maybe is an interruption of some business here. Hey, did that jerk Zerdok come through here? So you must be the ones who the... Helped with the takeover of the forge. Come, come, come. We can we can talk. I think all of you might want a meal after something like that. He had a lot of people working for him down there. That's that's fair. Um, I mean, you no harm. I uh, you've helped me with my own plans here. I've been looking for a reason to make some changes here. And I think all of you helped me with that enough that you deserve a fine cooked meal. Appreciations. I mean, like, we really fully don't know your intent, and I mean, like, he was kind of a tyrant, so we're kind of hoping that you're not a mean person or in the, you know, realm of enslaving or perpetuation of enslavement. So maybe we could talk about that over a glass of wine. That would be kind of cool, but, you know, 
Hey, maybe if, if 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 you're about to like soft sell us on like you know a pyramid scheme, maybe can we just save that for the morning? I'm not about to sell you on anything, truthfully. You all look beaten and bruised. That one in particular. He like looks the big tune, who's like usually very full of energy. Big tune himself being drained is all hell. Yeah. He just needs some milk. No, 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 no. I, wait, no, I if have. If it would entice you for a meal, I have milk on store. I have. I have. <laughs> Victor, I have medicine. Can we, can we, Yes, I have medicine for you now, so yes, you could, if you wish to indulge in milk. I, not too much. I drink all of the milk. Oh, God. Okay. He's got a sensitive stomach. Okay. Um, we're, we're the broken. Um, hi, this is my family. Um, you, uh, j again, not to be rude, introduction-wise, you're, you're his... Fiance? I guess you sounds could like call me. Uh, I'm gonna say sounds ex like almost ex fiance. Well, yeah, I will, yeah, okay. Yes, it would be ex fiance. And she, like, holds her, extends her hand outward, um, like, in a direction, like, as you, like, leave the, the hallway and, like, enter the dining chamber, uh, she kind of indicates to look behind you, and as, like, you uh, step into the room, you see in the corner, of this room is a uh, is a beaten and bashed uh, Zeradoc, his uh, head kind of scrambled from a, uh, a war hammer that is on uh, one of the guards that are like keeping watch in the room um, you see one more uh, like half drink uh, healing potion at his side um, and uh, he is deceased he's deceased mm. oh, oh yeah. I was hoping I get to do the you didn't do a Put the damage to him yourself. No, it doesn't that's matter fair. how many healing potions he had down there. He um he did not survive the the rush of the guard when he got up here. He came up here looking for my assistance, a way to bring him back to strength fast, and we seized the opportunity. I while you assisted saying, him to death. While she's saying all this, I just walk up to the corpse and in dwarvish I I say coward. I spit on his corpse. Make a perception check while you're that close. I would love to. I'm gonna guide myself if you'll allot it. I would. Yeah, that's all right. I'll take that. Good enough. You see, um, laying, uh, there's the healing potion that is uh, at his side. You see where like a bunch of his, uh, his his brainy gibbs are laying on the ground. A uh, the crown that he was wearing on his head. Uh, made entirely of charlatan, uh, uh, coated in a, a a large amount of blood, but uh, still intact. I mm, say I make, I make no effort to hide that. I go and grab it, and not in a like, ooh, this is mine, but in a like, ah, perfect, kind of like we need this, and I hold it up and I go. If you don't mind, um, I need this for research purposes. I don't want anything to do with it. Perfect. It's yours. Now, please, 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 sit. Let us talk. Have a meal. I think you'll find it to your liking. Mm. If it helps you, I cooked it myself. These Duragar can't cook with a dam. And she, like, yeah. looks to, like, her guards and is kind of, like, shrug. She's not wrong. That's fair. All right. That's fair. Um, I... I have not used this feature, and I am out of spell slots, but I ritual cast Detect Magic over the food, and I accelerate the ritual cast to an action. Perfect. And then I would say, oh no, not oh no, uh, Aethros, your detect magic would be reaching the end of its time, but still up. Okay. Um, Does the crown look magical? The crown is emanating necrotic magic up the wazoo. Okay. With that in mind, the, the I, healing potion I guys is, with you. I'm like, no. is emanating healing magic. So, yeah, wicked. Poison. Right. 
Um, cool. Did you, you say healing po potion with poison? No, potion. No. Like it's it's oh. healing magic. Healing <laughs> magic. Yeah. I heard healing potion with poison. I'm like, wow, that's a. And the, that's a hey, Ebron, hey, that's technically hey. just an ale. That's a that's that's, a, that's alcohol. That's alcohol. But I'll 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 I'll, I'll take that potion if nobody wants it. <laughs> it's just a tank of ale. It's, so um, it is a half of a healing potion. I'll have to make that mm -hmm. as an item card. It is like a half drake one. So you'd have instead of I think it's two d four, it'd be one d four, plus nice. a it's plus like a minor three, healing potion. Yeah, basically. Yeah, just drink it right now. Yeah. I'm drinking it right now. Yeah, go for yeah. it. Ain't nobody gonna stop you. Yeah. Boom. You're beat up. You yeah, need that. I haven't. Um. So I I pour one d four. You said. I pour everyone ale plus from three. the alchemy jug. Yeah. It'd be 1d4 plus 3. What do you... I'm sorry, I didn't hear that part. No, you're good. I just... I just, uh, I pour everyone in, like a, a mug of ale from the alchemy jug. Um, uh, like I approach the lady of the house and... Uh, may I? Oh, certainly. Thank I you, dearie. Feel, fill her cup appropriate height. Uh, and then just... Like we're 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 playing with uh, surface tension here, <laughs> just and a little bit extra. There you go. Thank you. Much appreciated. We probably look like all oh, shit. I apologize. I didn't get a chance to clean us all up. I understand. Especially now, you're all on a timeline. That's why I yeah. want you to eat, truthfully. You're my heroes of the day. You deserve something. Um, as you look over, I've been trying but getting distracted. Uh, both you and Aethros, oh no, as you look over the food, your detect magic would pick up healing properties from the uh, from the food itself. Can I? I mean, while I've never personally experienced it, I've definitely would say I've read, you know, wizard-like articles. Are we? enjoying a feast of a magical property of like a heroic standard dot 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 he questioned <laughs> I haven't actually looked up the uh, the effects of I... heroes feast doesn't do what I'd love it to do but you know yeah it doesn't give you the benefits of a long ride I know. There, there's uh, Your little magic poisons become immune to poisons and being frightened and make all wisdom saving throws with advantage. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, also um, by 2D10 for 24 hours. It does not... You, while you've read about it, this doesn't feel the same. Okay, um, cool. But it is... A it's meal. of a similar nature, but it is not... It's It was not created from a spell. This appears to be some form of alchemical like creation um through years and years of experimentation to perfect her craft well, it's like pizza. yeah it's it's ma yeah it's <laughs> magical food but it is it's still like physically created and gathered unlike the spells hero feast which creates the the food as part of the spell more compliments so, to the chef it was quite delicious. Mm. I guess what I need to know is as the party sits at the table, is everybody eating or is anybody not eating? Um, Ebron would like to know if the pseudo dragon is still in the area. It is. It's like, uh, right now, I guess, well, she's sitting at the table and as the party comes and uh, sits down, it would uh, jump off the table and is like curled up at her feet. Alright, never mind. Um, I, I don't want to be disrespectful, so yeah, I'll eat. Although I don't need any yep. HP. Be nice. Yeah, I'll eat. Yeah, I'll eat. Yep, I'll eat. I will. Um, it'll be okay. Good to know. Um, as the party is eating their food, um, Lady Grandalfa will also partake in the food um and she would like offer some of it down to her pseudo dragon and it would kind of just like hiss at the food itself well it was worth a try 
um, as she like just takes the food and starts to eat it herself. So, y you call yourself the Broken? That's bro Ken. I'm assuming it's a gnomish word. Uh, you're uh, sorry, talking about mouthful. Well, yes, no, you're entirely correct. I, I'm, I'm much appreciated for you uh, reading reading that. Yes, no, uh, we are the golden opportunity. Um, is technically what that means in most common languages. A very interesting, a very interesting choice for a band such as yourselves. Tell me, what, what, and by all means, it's not that I mean to pry. I just need to know. I would like to know a bit more of my, my party who, helped us seize the day here. What is your intentions or desires here in Ten Town? Hmm. Well, um, we're all... I'm gonna grab that roll. Big tune. Sorry. Grab uh, he grabs a roll. Can I make a general pick on? Uh, you cut out a bit. What were you trying to do? Can I make a general insight check on her? Yeah, that's fine. Woo! Map change. I see nothing. Because the change of the map jarred you. Yeah, the the map messed up my roll. That's <laughs> not how it works. Um, um, yeah. I guess what are you trying to discern? Because inside judge of character, so... judge of character. I want to make sure she's actually on her side. Why? I still... Um, to your discretion. Thirty it's... minutes, an hour left of my psionic link. Yeah, I would say. You probably, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, between the battle and your time here, it probably, you probably have about an hour, I would say. Because we met in the middle at two, so. Okay. And everyone's on the same phone call. Nice. Um, <laughs> looking her over, it's, it's kind of hard to get a read on her character as a whole, but she does give you, like, old grandma vibes. What that means to you is... At your own discretion. I dig that line. Okay. Okay. Um, As you eat the food, um, it fills you with a sense of warmth. Um, a good sense of warmth. Um, as if you've spent a lot of time uh, either doing light, you know... Uh, but like, each of you would be a little bit different. Like, uh, oh no, it'd probably be either... It reminds you of, like, times that you're tinkering or, um, like, reading your books or doing a lot of writing, maybe making scrolls. Um, yeah. Almost as if you had taken a long rest. Oh, you beautiful bastard. I love you. <laughs> as you're eating the food, all of you would gain the benefits of a long rest. Uh, um, I'm taking uh, that much so fast right now. I, I figured. Oh, it. But it's not a new day. But it's not a new day. Correct. We're not getting a level up. Just yeah. making sure. So before anybody yeah. asks... <laughs> Well, I, I would ask, do we still keep our temp HP? Or how no. does that work? No, I think that's timing wise. Um, yeah, I, I believe. I think temp HP disappears when you take a long rest. Yeah, so if you eat the food, okay. if you regardless, when you eat the food, you would lose the temp HP and gain regular HP. Don't worry, oh. you'll get more temp HP. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. It's temporary. No, I, that's fine. I just oh, for God. role playing, so narrative. Temp HP lasts until you, until it's either depleted or you finish a long rest. You just heard. Just looked it up. Uh, Nick, gotcha. breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, you would like feel like any of the wounds that you have would begin to close as like you have this like radiating yellow glow that would come from them, um, and it seems to have started once you began to digest the food. There's um, a oh, matter sorry, we no. need to discuss if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 please hit us. Uh, not physically, just, you know, uh, lay it on us. Well, I know it's not entirely your business. Were you planning on dealing with the charlatan monstrosity that just left here no more than 30 minutes ago? Yes, uh, that's kind of, uh, at least in my, I look at everybody at the table. <laughs> it's on eyes, the list. It's on the list, yeah. It's on, in my eyes, that's kind of like, we gotta kind of put a stop to that, because if it destroys 
10 towns that kind of negates the purpose of us saving 10 towns as a whole. Uh, not really sure where you are on the whole you're, you're in or out for this oral uh, character, but uh, I, the majority, I'm just going to say the majority of 10 towns is kind of done with the eternal rhyme. Needless to say, we've had a crazy last, we'll say, 72 to 96 conscious first going from helping the people of good mean retrieve ale to being frozen to having one party member still petrified and my gesture towards oh no his uh bag and uh our other three party members still up in Bryn Shander that we have no clue what their status is right now so you're looking to Maybe get back to Bryn Shander. I mean, in an escalated fashion. Where are I, we now? Is a good question too. I mean, I think um, we're where the dice is. Above, You're still yeah, at Sunlight we're, Fortress. We're just on the surface. Okay. You guys did a lot of walking in the last three days. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. This was. We went from like the spine of the, the world. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You went from. You went from deep below Bryn Shander over to like the middle between like you know deep straight down but between Goodmead and East Haven like down yeah. here and then curved around a mountain to find some white fortress in the underdark yeah. I we mean real... this one because it was closer to the the cities right uh yes um... we need to effectively get to this creature get to the rest of our family of, of, get back to our vehicle. We have a vehicle in another town we have to Good get mean. to. Yeah. I mean, like, we got... We're spread thin, ma'am. Um, and we still got that clockwork thing down. Yeah, we also need oh, to get that... I, I, I hate to be rude. Uh, can we get that back up here? Like, can at least somebody go down there and, like, at least with Tilly Tilly? I, I don't think Zabane can do it because Zabane... Sorry, buddy. Can't talk. Um, <laughs> he tries to... You just hear him, like, garble at you. And then he remembers, after this whole encounter, that he does not, in fact, have a tongue. So he just, like, quiet, shuts his mouth and just, like, quietly nods. <laughs> I mean, I could... I message Zabane uh, mentally. I'm like, hey, bud, I'm sorry. Wasn't trying to be rude. Is there anything you want to say? Can I, I mean, it's still... Through message, it's still a verbal verbal speak it's just only so that way they can hear so he would he would whisper to you but it would also still be jarbled nonsense oh dang it no. <laughs> sorry bud i my bad I, never mind uh all right yeah <laughs> so yes we we've got the monster two polar bears waiting for us and good mead three party members and burn chander and now this monstrosity and I did four Bryn Shander, effectively, I would assume. Yeah, and then we have a petrified teammate as well. Oh, I was Ally. so close. Family member. Um, you would uh, see Lady Grandelpha, like, she'd, like, uh, move her fingers to, like, summon one of her Duragar to her, and then uh, whisper something, and then they would take off to the lift to, like, uh, head back down into the forge. Um, don't worry. We'll make sure everyone is here. I can't say that I'm... that I myself can send you directly where you need to go, but I have something that might be able to help you. Although, it'll require... <laughs> whichever one of you is the least likely to succumb to temptation to maybe, maybe make a bargain. The what? We like are... I mean, we're already in the point of, like, somebody may or may need not need to lose a pinky. I mean, what? Ebert kind of rubs his hands together. What? My precious. Yes. That, don't, don't, don't do that, Ebert. Don't. That's, that is, don't, that is bad news amongst halflings. That's, you know, <laughs> let's not, let's not do that. Um, you would, uh. You would see Lady Grandelpha. Uh, she like uh, grabs something from inside, like her coat, and then uh, 
pulls what looks to be an amulet off of her uh off of her body. So funny, Joe. For helping me so hopefully be able to bring order to the Sunblight clan. A bit of a new rule and a better name here in Ten Towns without Zeradok in power. We'll deal with his children when they return. Um but I'm not worried about that right now. Oh my god, my, he had an offspring? He does, and they're wreaking havoc in other towns within Ten Towns. One of them, I believe, is in East Haven. The other one is up in Cair Dineval. Please don't say Targos. Please don't say that. Or not the Targos. You know who I'm talking about. The, the havoc that they're wreaking is more subtle. They're not trying to be seen. Okay, alright. They don't have the numbers up there to launch an assault. Okay, my apologies. But my clan's okay. name is Musgart. For spelling FYI, it's M-U-Z-G-A-R-D-T. Musgart. And she like pulls this amulet off and she like sets it on the table. Um, it's like a it's gold inlaid in a. Uh, ornate design with a large red looking uh, slit eye in the middle uh, your detect magics would em uh, get a strong sense of uh, both necrotic and uh, it would be abjuration magic coming from it my family uh I start drawing on the table a circle of salt, and I'm going to ritually cast Identify while she's talking. Okay. My family, for many, many generations, have had this amulet that we've kept very close to whoever was destined to lead our clan forward. And over time, well, that has now fallen to me. Inside here is the avatar of an elder being from the Far Realm. Mm -hmm. Have any of I you heard of the Far Realm before? I look at Miris. Like how far is the Far Realm? Like, like over the horizon? So like, That's where I came from. So there's... Many, many horizons, boy. Yeah. Oh. Many horizons. Realm is in distance or time. No, we're talking spatially, like, beyond the Astral Sea. This is where many beings that predate this world exist, where Beholders and Mind Flayers come from. My clan, many generations ago, was able to house one of these beings or at least their connection to this world, deep within this amulet. And over the last, she like begins doing math, roughly 1200 years. This amulet has brought us great fortune, great change, and uh, helped with our, maintain our security as a force in the world. Not militaristically, but just to con help us continue our name. I have <laughs> to keep this being here. Well, those of you who choose the venture within will see that it is a chained being. It exists there so long as the chains are in place. I'm not saying this being is a evil force to be reckoned with. Rather, I think it just wants to be free. There's one more charge, one more chain that attaches it to this world. There was a total of five. And over time, we've used them to better ourselves and our people. Should you desire to get to Bryn Shander quickly, I feel confident this being would be able to transport you there at the expense of breaking the last chain. It will put you there 
before the dragon would ever reach Bridge Handler. You could be reunited, make plans to hmm, fight it should it arrive. The choice would be yours. Bryn Chander, a battlefield, you being able to get there, or wherever you wanted to go. I don't know if it would be able to, with the power that it has here, break you free from the everlasting rhyme, but if you have friends in the north, you probably don't want that anyway. But it requires a sensitive hand, as this creature will do anything in its power to sway you complete a request that you submit to even if it's not your own you have to be the one in control if you go in there you can't fall for its idle desires because regardless of if you complete it or it gives you a request that you submit to either way the chain breaks you need it to be in your favor and she, like, gives you a serious look. Like, she was, like, super granny mode for, like, the longest time. And then when she starts talking about the amulet, she gets extremely serious. So is there, like, a non-fast way to get to the surface? Yeah, <laughs> we're on the surface, bud. It's just, there's no other way to pop quick. Yeah, you would see, like, there's a window behind this dining hall that, like, overlooks the side of this mountain. Um, you can't see from this distance any of ten towns there's currently a blizzard going on outside but uh th you're at the surface right now like you're in this fortress on the side of the mountain so we have to effectively make a bargain with a creature from the far realm or and i'm saying this psionically we could book it to good me lightning tank get the brain chander and then go back to the by the time we get to Gidmead, that creature is already going to be there. We there's we cannot run fast enough on foot to catch up to this thing, let alone try to get whatever creatures and run through the forests and high snowbanks and across red and water. I could, but you guys probably can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're we're not. As the party <laughs> contemplates. I mean, their uh contemplates their options and takes all of their food into their bellies a warm change from eating rations for the last three days um i think that's where we're gonna leave it for tonight Oof. craziness <laughs>